Okay. So welcome everyone to the uh, Groups Update webinar. First thing we're going to do, we're going to uh, take a look at two preferences that we've added for the groups and wholesale area. So if I go into System Configuration, Property, on the Preferences tab, I'm going to modify, and you'll see that we added two new options. Display contracted block in group module and display wash block in group module. Now, some of you may be already familiar, familiar with these terms. Some of you may not use these uh, currently with the groups. So I'll cover this a little bit here and talk more when we get into groups. So obviously, a contracted block would be my group contact being the bride and groom. They have requested 25 rooms. I'm going to enter that in as my contracted block. The washed amount would be myself as a sales manager or a conference service manager or GM, I believe that this group is only going to pick up 20 rooms. So I'm going to put in my washed block as 20 rooms, and I'm going to put in my actual block as 20 rooms as well. So we're actually going to be holding less than we contracted. Now again, some hotels, depending on your size and uh, depending on your past history of groups, you may not be in the habit of washing blocks. So certainly for those hotels, just turning on the display contracted block may be the route that you can go, just so that you can compare what did we, um, you're going to see some reports coming out, and the reports are going to be comparing what was the original contract and then what was actually picked up, and we're going to be comparing the pickup to what was contracted. And then for those hotels that do choose both options, the contracted and wash block, you're going to see that the report is going to compare to uh, both contracted and wash block. So I'm going to turn these preferences on. Just so you know, next week when the um, uh, when the update comes out, these two boxes will automatically be unchecked. So if you want to take advantage of these, you would have to come and turn these on for your property. Okay, so I've turned those on. We're going to close out. We're going to go over to the groups area. We're going to click new on the right hand side. Okay, so you'll notice that we did make changes to the primary screen, but a lot of what we entered in was um, fields that are from separate areas. So I'll go through each one, and the ones that have stayed the same will kind of pass over. So obviously, as we know, the name of the group has always been there. Okay, group ID has always been there as well. Okay, our client type, room charge code. Now, previously we had arrival date and nights, but we did not have departure date. So we decided that as you change, just like a reservation, as you change your number of nights, it's going to change your departure date. We also added in the checkout time feature. So as you know, this field is over on the new reservation screen. And it is an informational field where you can enter in a uh, late checkout. Now this late checkout is only going to apply to rooming list groups. So individual pickup reservations are still going to be treated, uh, created, or, uh, treated as that, um, as an individual pick up, thus the conversation about late checkout and whatnot will be handled on a case-by-case -case basis. This late checkout applies to when you have a rooming list. So if we had a tour group and the bus was leaving at 2 p.m., we can put this in as 1,400. This field shows up on our housekeeping report as an informational field only. It doesn't actually check the group out at 2 p.m. or anything like that. Again, it's just an informational field. Okay, we do once again have the guests can arrive and depart outside the block, our pre and post nights if you choose. Actually, let's move this group up to February 1st. And here I can do my pre-nights and my post-nights just like before. 
Okay, you'll notice that our cutoff days are cutoff type and block type. These are all fields that we moved over from our block tab. Okay, they still fun function the exact same way. So a lot of hotels may have a 30-day cutoff. Our cutoff type being whole block, and our block type being solid. Source of business and attach note. Of course, we're always here. Okay, contact and billing page. Nothing has changed here. Okay, I'm going to click post. Now, you'll notice that the second tab here is rates. In our current version, it's actually notes. And you'll see that we've actually moved notes to number eight at the end. Um, this was just a small change. Um, notes really doesn't uh, affect how you're building a group. So we always want to start with what are the quickest things you need to fill in to start building a group in the system. Okay. So I'm going to go to the Rates tab. Now the Rates tab, as you know, that changed in our last release where we added the shortcut to the Rate Wizard. You can certainly still use the manual rate and use the attaching rate per room type as before. But if you're using the Rate Wizard, the nice thing now is when we use the shortcut to the Rate Wizard, I can click over to my group rate here. We're going to edit the group rate. We're going to go to our Groups tab. Now, on this page, it will only be current and future groups that are going to be on here. So I would find the group that we uh, are working on. I'm just going to back up for a moment. Hamilton Paper Co. Admittedly, I forgot the name of the group that we were working on. OK, so we go to Groups, and we'll go to Hotel Direct. And here we have the Hamilton Paper Co. We're going to click next to the name of the group and click Update. Close out, close our rate wizard. When we come back to the rate area, I can now select the group rate. And here, this allows me to set the group rate as the default rate on all my room types in one step instead of having to go attach it on each one. Again, this was a feature we put out in the last uh, last release. And as a uh, another side note, this is only available when using the rate wizard, not the old uh, way of entering rates in the system. When we go to override attached rates, we can override this specifically for this group. So here I can see that my group rate is 255. So I can go in and I can override this if I decided to give a special contracted rate for this group. And we're going to see the rate update down below so we can see the rates that we just overrode to. Next, we're going to go to the Block tab. And this is where we're going to see some big changes here. OK, so on the Block tab itself, we still have our room types. The total is our physical inventory that we have. And we have the average rate column. Now, obviously, the big change we've made, if you recall in the current version of Room Key, we have this little drop down in the upper right hand corner. And the drop down would be the different views where we you would flip over to see what is the available inventory of the hotel, what is the block, what is the pickup, what is the block remaining. So it was inconvenient to have to switch between those screens to say, OK, well, for instance, if I needed to add five more rooms to a group, I would have to click on the drop down, go over to the availability, see do I have the rooms, then come back to the block, edit, and add that block in. So what we decided was to put these fields all on the same screen. Now, for those of you who are not using Contract and Wash, obviously these will not show up at all. Okay? So I'm going to go to Edit Mode in the lower left-hand corner. Now, this inventory column here, this is your availability of the hotel. Okay? And this is reading directly off of your uh, inventory calendar. 
So let's say for this group that they contracted 20 of our two QNLS. This group has stayed with us in the past and consistently they have always picked up 15 rooms, but they ask us for 20 all the time. I'm going to wash my block. I'm only going to do 15. At this point when I'm first building the group, we're going to match the block to whatever the wash amount is. Or like I said, if you're not using the wash column under the preferences, you're only using contract, you would match your, um, you would match your block to the contract. Okay, I'm going to click post. And I forgot to do this for day two, so let me go back here and do it for day two as well. Okay, now to be very clear, the contract and wash numbers are informational only. They do not affect the inventory uh, within your hotel. It is still only the block column listed as BLK. These are the rooms that are taken out of inventory. This number can change over the life of this group. The bride and groom may have asked for 20 rooms and we add five more rooms. We take away 10. We end up giving them different room types. So the block amount, the block column, can be changing over time as this group develops and turns into whatever it's going to be. Changing the contract and wash does nothing to your inventory. Again, these are informational fields that are going to show up on that report where we're comparing our actual pickup at the end of the day to the contract and wash numbers. Okay, now I'm going to close out of this group here. We're going to go back into operations groups. I'm going to search out the Hamilton Paper Co. again. We're going to open it up. Okay, if I go black, back to the block tab, notice that when we come back in, the um, inventory block pickup are the only three fields that we show by default now. Okay, the contract wash, and REM stands for remaining block. So if I wanted to see these fields, if I click on contract and wash, that's going to bring those fields back. Okay. Sometimes if we have a very large group, say we had like you know, 89 rooms in block and 77 pickup, instead of just doing the math, if we just want to see the difference, we can click on remaining. So right now, because I have no rooms picked up, obviously we're going to have the same amount in block here. Okay. The other thing you will notice is we actually put in the rate per day. So in the current model of room key, we're only seeing the average rate. And if your hotel is using, you know, say you're using a pre and post night rate and that different rate for the nights of the groups, the average rate doesn't always tell the story. So being able to see the actual rate per day is going to help. And that will, just as a side note, your uh, the overridden rates that you use over here will show up on this block tab. Okay, so as as time goes on and as this group picks up, there may be a time where they pick up all 15 rooms. So certainly as a, uh, a, a manager, sales manager, a conference service manager, you want to come back in here and you want to keep an eye on this because if they did end up picking up all 15 rooms that you washed down to, remember we contracted 20 rooms. So if they already picked up 15 and let's say we're three months out from the group, there's a good chance they're going to pick up those five additional rooms. At that point, you're going to want to come back in and you would add the five rooms into the block by bringing it up to 20. We would still leave the washes of 15. Again, we want to compare to what we put in when we originally put this group in. This is what we're comparing against. How well did we do? How well did we guess our wash numbers, what they're going to be? Okay. So when editing from that point forward, you're editing the block amounts. Okay. Now, one side note I am going to throw out. 
for those of you who use the block holds that used to be on our block area, and not a lot of people use the block holds for group, um, I do find that a lot of people are using the edit mode on the calendar. The block holds at this point, when I do an amendment, you'll only be able to put in the holds, which is the block number. We don't have the contracted and wash available yet for the block holds area. In our February release, that will be available. So hang tight on that, that is coming. But like I said, a lot of times block holds is not used in the group area. Okay, so I'm gonna close out of the group area. And we're gonna go into the wholesale area. So if I go into operations wholesaler, the changes that we did make um, to our uh, um, group area, of course, also changed in our wholesale area. However, the changes will be delayed a little bit until February once February once again. So just to review wholesale, and I know not a lot of people use the wholesale area, but for those of you that do, you're gonna use the wholesale area exactly like you did uh, before. We would build the wholesaler, we would attach the rates, Now, in the block area, at this point, again, when we use the block holds, we're only going to be using the hold, which is comparable to the new BLK, or the block number. That's what we refer to as hold. So again, the contract and wash is not gonna be available in the block holds at this point. If I go to the inventory screen, you are going to see the contracted wash on here, but they are not usable in the wholesale area as of yet. Like I said, this will be added in our February, February release. So our goal was to get this release out for the groups area, which most people use so they can start to use this new functionality. Okay, so at this point, that's really the changes from this uh, release that we put into the group area. So I'm gonna switch over to the uh, question area. For any of you that do have questions, you can certainly type it in the question area. For any of, those, any of you who do not have questions, now I am gonna read out some of these questions if I feel that they relate um, to the whole group and you guys can all benefit. But for anyone uh, who doesn't have any questions, feel free to uh, dismiss yourself from the meeting. You're gonna see this, um, you're gonna see this come out, um, I believe our release is coming out on Monday with the new features. Okay, so I'm gonna go through the questions here. So one of the questions, good question. Will these new features show up on groups already built? Indeed they will. However, because we didn't have contract and wash before, those fields are gonna be there and they're all gonna have zero in them. So certainly if you wanna go back and edit and put in your contracted and wash numbers, um, you certainly can. Okay, that is more specific for that property. Uh, this one, Ken, one of the questions was about the rate override. Um, and would you do higher rates on weekdays or weekends? Um, and certainly when you're building a group and you're using rates, you have a couple of choices. So let me talk a little bit more about the rates here.
Okay, so in the rates area, I'm going to go into Rate Wizard. And what you'll see is I have a group rate in here. You'll also notice that I have a corporate group rate in here, a Smurf group rate in here. So often what hotels would do is if we had a lot of groups and our rates are all over the place. So for one group, the rate is $98. One group, it's 99 Another group, it's 101 So each rate is individually negotiated for each, um, each company. Um, or each group. A lot of hotels would use our manual rate within the group area. The problem with the manual rate is on some reports in our system, manual rate really loses its meaning. If we see group rate, if we see Smurf group rate, if we see government rate, best available rate, these are all rates that mean something to us as far as segmentation, knowing which are which are the leisure rates, which are our group rates, which are our the corporate rates. When you see manual, again, it loses that meaning. So one of the recommendations we're making with the new rates uh, feature is you can build a rate plan like our group rate. And what you'll see here is I actually have my group rate tiered. I'm going to click Next and go to Rate Tiering. And on the tiering, what I've actually done is I've made my group rate and the way we do this is by making it zero dollars equal to group rate. So group rate is equal to best available rate. Knowing that I'll probably never use that best available rate as my group rate. Well, what that allows me to do when I attach it to my group Go back in. We're going to set the group rate as our default rate. And when I go into the override attach, we're still going to see the variances that we would see from our bar. So as we can see, my standard room is $100 for the first three days. I'm jumping up to 212 on the Sunday. So obviously, I'm getting into another season. Okay. We also may see that our best available rate goes up on the weekend, thus our uh, group rate that is equal to the bar rate also goes up on the weekend. Okay, so you would be able to see those variances here. And this is at the point where we may say, okay, for the first three days, I'm still going to give a special rate, so I unclick my January 18th, so currently the rate is uh, 100. I'm going to bring this down to 95. And then for my last night, that is 212. And you can either uncheck these checkboxes here, or you can override rates by date range as well, um, the second tab, whichever is easier. So here, if I do the 18th of the 18th, the date being 212, or rate being 212, maybe for this group, I'm going to bring it down to 199. Okay. So I would encourage you, um, or encourage the properties out there, that if you are primarily using manual rates for groups, um, now would be a good time to look at adding that group rate, tearing it off of bar, making it equal to bar, and then using that as kind of, it's almost like a placeholder. We know we're going to change the rate, but just that name, group rate, is what we want. And then for those hotels that do get into other segmentation, looking at the difference between how much tour business are we doing, how much corporate group business are we doing. Then we can create a separate rate plan for each one of those segments. So for example, I have the corporate group rate, SMURF, which is our social, medical, educational, religious, fraternal group rate. Again, all equal to bar. But I'm just using that as a tracking piece on the group. All right, let me go back up here. We have lots of questions pouring in, which is great. Um, 
Uh, it was the group block page that showed the uh, rates broken down by day. Um, yeah, if you go into the override attach rates, you would see it here. But as well, when we go to the inventory screen, or sorry, the block screen, inventory tab, uh, once again, you're going to see the rate that is for each of those days as well. Whereas now, in the current version, you're only seeing the average rate, which is not always useful. Uh, one of the questions was, were some of these changes related to uh, the new integration with he Hotels Hales Pro? Um, indeed, they were. The second part of your question, Keith, I'll uh, have to defer someone to answer because I do not know the answer uh, when that is expected to be available. So we'll, uh, one of the questions, again, will you have to re-enter your groups? You will not. It's really just taking advantage of the new feature if you would like to. Um, someone asked, could the wash also be called netting? Um, we can't override the uh, name of the column per individual property. Um, unfortunately, but uh, that is something you could uh, refer to it as, I believe. This is a good question. Where are the new reports we are talking about? Um, the new reports are actually going to be out in the February release. Um, we have a total of seven new group reports coming. Um, some very good reports coming out. Again, relating contract uh, and wash block in there. Um, doing a better job, as we know, in our forecast reports. A lot of our forecast reports don't include block. Um, so we are breaking that out. Our occupancy and revenue forecast and our occupancy and revenue statistics report, once a group reservation or once a uh, block is picked up, it becomes part of the overall number, so it's not really separating there. So we've addressed that. Um, we're looking at GRC, so groups room control uh, we're putting in there. So some very uh, uh, nice reports coming out. Um, the plan was to release a few this release, but of course with the changes that we made to the groups area, that was our main focus. So you'll see those come out in our February release. Do contract and wash show on any reports? Not at this point. Again, that is something that will be out in the February release. Um, someone asked, was there any change to solid and transparent block? There is no change to solid and transparent block at this time. So if you're using a transparent block, it acts exactly the same way as it did before. Uh, someone asked, um, can you put a percentage in for wash? You cannot. It's a matter of just taking the amount that you want to wash it down to and entering it in. So if I'm putting in my contracted rooms of 100 and I know that we typically wash down 10%, I would bring it down to 90 rooms. Uh, yes, so someone asked, will you be able to do this on each room type if you have a variety of rooms? Indeed, you will be able to. So if you had a group that did, uh, you know, they contracted 20 of your two QNL, 
near KNF, they wanted five, so I decided not to wash down those since they're only holding five. You know, one of our KNM. Of course, you can still edit for each room type. Uh, I think I answered this, but SMURF just stands for Social, Medical, Educational, Religious, Fraternal. Um, some newer people have added an E to SMURF at the end, which stands for Entertainment. Uh, so I've heard um, some people some people will use the, the phrase uh, leisure group, but uh, SMURF can be used as well. So it's whatever segmentation would make sense to you. So. Back in my day, we never had the E at the end of Smurf, but apparently it's a new thing. Um, can you add an all to the area regarding group rate area? Room time. I believe someone is asking, can the, on the rates tra tab, can we have the, uh, the way that the old rates work be able to be brought over for uh, all rooms? At this point, we don't have that. I will tell you that our uh, programming is going to be moving towards the rate wizard more and more. You will see in future uh, releases that we will be moving all the functionality that we had from the old rates area. There are a few items that you could do in the old rates area that you can not, not do in Rate Wizard. You'll see those all migrate over and our goal will actually be to remove the old way of doing rates once we move all those uh, features over. As far as a programming standpoint, it makes more sense that we move forward with one unified way of doing something. And the rate wizard is an easier way to enter in your rates and manage your rates all from one area. So as soon as we move all that functionality over, that will be removed. Uh, Callie, about your wholesale, um, that's probably something I would call you directly on. I think I know the issue you're having. So someone asked, can I show how the group rate shows when making a booking for a group? And someone else asked if we can see how to pick up from a group. So this will cover both, uh, both of those. So if I click on New Res, We're going to switch over to our group client type. We're going to choose Johnson Retail. We're going to refresh. Here we see the group block. And if I click on the little plus symbol, this is where we're seeing the group rate. So the name group rate, and then whatever overridden rate you've used, or, or if you've left it, the same would show up here. Okay, we select that rate, make the booking, and the rest is normal from here.
I'm sorry, I'm just a little bit quiet. I'm just going through the questions. Uh, there are some that I will be calling people directly on that more relates to your property. Uh, I want to make sure that I, if I have built a rate and then I build a group, I can then select the rate that I built under the group default rate and it will attach the rate to all of the room types. Yes. So if you build a, a rate within Rate Wizard for all room types and you attach it to the group, it will automatically attach to all rooms within that group. Uh, does F2 still work the same way for a new reservation? It does. And once you get to the new res screen, if you're switching over to group, it would still function exactly the same way. Um, Phil, there is a rate yielding feature in the system. Uh, the question was, is there a way to have rates change if number of rooms booked changes? Um, you could possibly look at rate yielding, but that's more so on the basis of the overall occupancy of the hotel, not specifically on a group block. So I, I think at this point, I don't think, uh, if I'm understanding the question correctly, so if they book 20 rooms with the group, you want the rate to be X amount, and then if they book any more rooms after that, it's a different rate, um, we wouldn't have that at this point. The only way would be to attach two different rates to the group. So you would have a... Um, We'd offer one rate, you could close out the second rate once you uh, have fulfilled 20 rooms or so, and then have the other rate, the only one, be open on that group. That may be one solution for what you're looking for. But it would not be an automatic thing that would switch over. Someone asked about a group contract. Um, we don't have a group contract at this point. Um, we are looking at um, putting in a, uh, as part of the reports, um, now this one may not be out by February, but something we are looking at putting in is a group contract summary. Um, our, our property management system is not a sales and catering system. We're not trying to be a sales and catering system. Um, however, we do definitely see the benefit of being able to have like a contract summary page that would show you the name of the group, number of rooms booked, um, and terms and conditions uh, to a certain extent. Um, for a full contracting, you know, we looked at programs like Delphi or Hotel Sales Pro or um, any other um, uh, sales and catering system out there. And of course, we are uh, soon going to be releasing our Hotel Sales Pro interface. So certainly a great program to work with, um, especially once the interfacing uh, is working. So that's certainly something uh, you may want to look into um, if interested. But definitely a, a contract summary of sorts is something we're looking at uh, putting in down the road. Uh, under client type, will you still be able to choose your different client types? Indeed you will.
is the rate field showing the group rate or the hotel bar? It is showing the group rate. So whatever rate, whatever rate plan you attach to the group, that's what you're going to be seeing. Is that uh, that rate? Um, how can you access group history from previous years? Um, this is nothing new with the new release, but uh, just to give you an idea here, if I go into operations groups, if you go into view and go to search, take off exact match. So say I went to the year 2014. Oops. 2014. You have to choose a month. You can only run it for a month, but I can see all the groups that stayed in 2014. So that's one of the ways that you could look at doing it. Uh, two block rooms. Two block rooms not using the amendment section. Um, I believe, uh, Gina, you're asking uh, in the wholesale area, how do, you, how do you block rooms? You would still do it the same way in the wholesale area. The block amendment does work, okay? So you're still able to use the block holds feature. What I'm saying is you won't be able to put in contract and wash in here yet. So that's what's going to be out in February. So this hold still is your block. I believe that's what you're asking there. Um, someone asked that, uh, or it says we need to have access to manual rates. And certainly you still do have access to manual rates. So if you don't want to use the rate wizard or rate plan, on the rates tab, you're still going to have access to the manual rate here. Select the number of rooms through the inventory edit of block rooms, not using amendment selection. Uh, yes. So again, I think someone's asking, can you edit, use edit mode and still change the block on various room types? And yes, you can. Someone asked, can I use the group rate if I have more than one group that overlaps each and have different rates? Yeah, so if you use the same group rates, the rate override that you use on that specific group only applies to that group. It won't change it for the other one. So you certainly can. Uh, when will this video be available? As soon as we're done, we're going to convert it most likely be out by tomorrow. Um, can you book meeting space uh, for groups in this area or banquet rooms? Uh, no, we do not have that. Uh, capability. Again, we would refer to like a hotel sales pro uh, for doing meeting room 
and whatnot and banquet rooms. Will there be historical reports on the February release? Yes, they will. Um, someone asked, can we rename the columns from contracted and washed to something more familiar? Uh, we cannot. It's one of those things that if we change it on one property, it's going to change it on all. Okay, and that's all the questions I feel that um, doesn't require a phone call or something more specific for um, a conversation uh, with the person who asked it. So if no one has any more questions, uh, we'll wrap it up there. Um, if you do have any questions, I'm just going to stay on the line just for a moment uh, longer, just in case someone is typing. I can't see when someone is furiously typing in the groups area. Um, are there new permissions for groups? Uh, there's not new permissions for groups, um, only the uh, under system configuration property, just those two preferences really. Not, a, not permissions at this point. Can we revisit the webinar? Yes, our plan is um, for everyone that attended the webinar, I believe GoToMeeting autom or GoToWebinar automatically sends you the recording, but we're also going to make it available on our website um, to be accessed later. So if a person doesn't have rate wizard access, can they override rates? I'm not sure if you're asking, can you use the rate override? You can't use the rate override um, unless you are using rate wizard. But if you're asking, is there a permission to stop people who have access to groups from using the rate override? No, we don't have that permission yet. And, and certainly any feedback that you all have when this new release comes out, uh, please send it our way because uh, you know we want we want these new things in group to be uh, working for the hotel and be good for the hotel. So uh, certainly any feedback you have or any changes that uh, uh, you feel we need to make to it, we're taking all suggestions. So please send our way. Okay. And again, I have about 44 people in attendance still. Um, so again, if, if you don't have any questions, you can certainly dismiss yourself. Otherwise, I'm, again, I'm going to stay on the line just for a little bit more in case anyone's uh, frantically typing. Thank you. Um, for switching to rate uh, wizard in the rate wizard document so if you go into help uh, room keys smart or actually uh, probably best to go to our website um, go to the room key website and under system configuration the rate wizard document that we have there's a whole section on converting your old rates to the rate wizard um, I'm not going to lie, there's a number of steps, and you really want to follow step by step with the document on how to convert over um, to it. I would suggest reviewing the document. If you have any questions, let us know before you start. Um, but it's definitely one of those things you do not want to skim that document. You want to follow it step by step um, to go through. 
So certainly look it over, and if you have any questions, let us know, and uh, we can guide you, guide you in the right direction.